CBS News coverage of Election 72. Tonight, the latest returns. This broadcast is sponsored by the Ford Motor Company and 6,283 Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealers. The goal, no unhappy owners. Reporting from CBS News Election Headquarters in New York, here is correspondent Walter Cronkite. Good evening from CBS News Election Headquarters. Uh, some or all of the polls have closed now in a dozen states, and the early returns put President Nixon, as expected, out in front and by a sizable margin. These early returns, far too few to be significant, however, nevertheless conform to all of the indicators and all of the polls. Let's take a look at that popular vote with about 1% of the precincts counted. President Nixon has 570,000 votes, and George McGovern, 283,000. That's a two-to-one margin for President Nixon. And CBS News is able to say on the basis of our sample precincts that the president definitely uh, has won Kentucky and Indiana. Kentucky by a 65 to 35 margin. Indiana by an even larger one, 67 to 33. Also, in Indiana, our CBS News estimate is that the Republican candidate for the uh, governorship will win there. He is Mr. Bowen, and he uh, has beaten the former governor, Mr. Welsh. On the electoral vote, President Nixon now has 22 electoral votes from Kentucky and Indiana. He's leading in states with 35 more electoral votes, and that would give him a 57 toward that 270 he needs for re-election. The uh, total vote coming in tonight indicates a very heavy turnout across the entire United States, uh, much heavier than anyone had anticipated when the, uh, the newsmen and the pundits and the pollsters out across the countryside said they were finding apathy along uh, among the many states. Reports of the heavy turnout indicate that that vote could very well go above 80 million, and that would be a record. It would have to go above 88 million to be a record in percentage above uh, the previous record established in 1968. CBS News can now say that President Nixon is also a winner in Tennessee. Uh, since most of the state, including the heavily Democratic cities, have not yet reported, the current estimate, though, of 72 percent for Nixon probably is going to drop somewhat as the polls close in the rest of the state. But uh, at the, when all the numbers are in, President Nixon will add Tennessee to his uh, total vote. Across the country, the Nixon landslide seems to be developing about as predicted. But of course, there are a lot of other races to be watched here tonight. And how broad and how long will President uh, Nixon's coattails be? Will he carry into office a, a new House of Representatives and a new Senate, Republican for only the third time in the last 40 years? There are 33 Senate seats up this year. All 435 members of the House, of course, are up. 18 governorships are up, too. Besides that, thousands upon thousands of local races for everything from uh, mayor to dog catcher and state offices, of course, as well, and a lot of propositions on the ballot, a lot of uh, uh, referendum-type uh, uh, questions being asked. In Colorado, for instance, uh, will the Olympics, the Winter Olympics, be held there in 1976? Marijuana legalization is on the ballot in California, abortion in Michigan, that sort of question all across these United States. So there's a lot of reason yet to get out uh, to a vote, uh, whether the presidential race seems to be swinging one-sidedly one way or the other. Let's take a look now at all those races around the uh, United States. We have Mike Wallace reporting from the east, Roger Mudd from the south, Dan Rather from the Midwest, John Hart from the West, and Eric Severide to analyze the whys and the hows of this uh, big election night. Since most of those early poll closings have come in the South, we'll hear first from Roger. Roger? Well, the solid South uh, used to be solid. Last time it was solid Democratic was 1944, and since then it's broken apart. But tonight, just looking at our regional map, you can see the building blocks already are going into place for a solid Republican South. Already we have a presidential winner in Kentucky and Tennessee, and uh, early indications are from every poll and every pre-voting sounding that the president would sweep the South, perhaps uh, doing not as well in, in Texas.